Alright, here we go. Now, like I said in the last video, it was really hard to put this thing down and uh, stop adding little converted pieces to it. So, honestly, after I got done with the first video, I kept on going. There were a few parts that uh, really needed a little bit more attention. And I just, like I said before, I couldn't put this thing down for the longest time until I was like, just like, okay, time to start painting it. Now, I really didn't go into any, like major conversions on the second part here. I just just a few little upgrades. Changed the faceplate because the first one just wasn't doing it for me. I uh, just took one of the original Knight faceplates and chopped it in half and put a spike sticking out of it. Just wanted to make it look a little bit more more chaosy. Plus I want to do a little bit of a light effect on the uh, on the, the eyes there. But you'll see that in the painting process. Can't wait to show you that. The uh, cowl, I ended up putting a little bit more green stuff on it, added some more dangly chains to the shoulder pauldron here. Yeah, just had a lot of fun with this thing. So I'm so glad you're here so you could watch the, uh, the, pa the painting of this. Had a great time with it. And like I said in the first video, I do have a second Imperial Knight. I really want to convert that one as well. So let's get on with this and bring along with part two, the painting. Now from the beginning I always had an idea of how I wanted this to look and I think at the end I've pretty much uh, accomplished what I set out to do. I wanted to have like some Death Guard green in there, some of the uh, some of the old school Death Guard cream color and just there's uh, like sore skin areas and broken skin and it's just I, I, I love the way it eventually turns out so uh, just taking everything off right now getting any kind of blue tack off of there so I can start priming these pieces and just get ready to have some fun with this. Now for priming I'm going with my uh, trusty Steinal Res Black. Uh, normally for like larger models I'll use a can of flat black spray paint from the dollar store. It's usually about 99 cents to two bucks at the most. But I just decided to uh, just go ahead, use the Steinal Res. Uh, ended up uh, giving it uh, two thinner coats, just to uh, just to make sure I can get a good good coverage without obscuring any detail. Now the uh, turned out that I thinned it down a little too much, so yeah, the, the two thinner coats worked out perfectly for this. Okay, moving on to some Citadel Typhus Corrosion. I've always joked about that if you want to ruin a brush, paint with some Typhus Corrosion because there's particles in there that give you that uh, that corroded look and feel. Uh, you can actually make your own using thin brown paint and some baking soda. But for this one, I just decided to uh, just go with what was in the arsenal and uh, give it some, some nice crusty pieces. Yeah, look at that brush there. Give it some nice crusty pieces to uh, add, add some texture. Now for the base for my uh, for the rust and all the, me the metals, I uh, went with uh, Citadel's Rhinox Hide. It's a really, really good color for uh, either starting off with uh, some darker rust or even if you were doing leather. Uh, works out all the time for me. And for some reason I wasn't wearing gloves, but it's acrylic paint, so it'll scrub right off. But yeah, this will give it a give the piece a nice base coat for uh, for adding in some like rust stipples and sponge effects, all that fun stuff. Which yeah, that's been I've been, I've been wanting to do it for a long time on this on this piece, so I'm really glad that I finally got a chance to uh, to start it up. 
Now that little uh, that little air drum, that oil barrel there, I was going to put that on the base, but I ended up not using it. All right, then moving on to uh, giving the giving the piece a nice thin coat of the uh, the Rhinox hide. And I didn't go all over with it. I just uh, kind of like splotching. So there was still, still some black though showing through on certain areas. Uh, doing some stippling now with Mornfang Brown. This will be your second layer of uh, rust. And with this, with the, uh, the stippling, yeah, I'm just going to do it in random patterns. I'm not going to make it look like uh, the whole thing was rusted out. Uh, add some water to it and give it a nice rust wash. Yeah, the thing I like the most about rusting is that you work in layers. You're going to start with the uh, the dark brown, like that, that Rhinox hide there, and then slowly build it up to the point where the, uh, the high points are going to be the spots that you're going to see the most rust on or in areas that are going to pool where just the water will collect and it'll just keep on eating away at that metal. And there he goes right there. He's looking pretty good so far. Nice and rusted, but not too overdone because we still have some more to add to him. Okay, now we're going to go with some uh, sponging with some Citadel Scrag Brown. Uh, these tweezers are the, uh, they're, they're the kind that they're always closed until you squeeze them, then they open. Uh, Danny over at Easy 8 Online Painting Club, he refers to these as Tacus Clamps because I suggested him, suggested using these on one of his uh, videos. And ever since then, he's referred to them by my last name, so... Gotta love it. But yep, just taking some uh, ordinary kitchen sponge and just a little bit of paint on there. Just get some of that, uh, that next level rust. Okay, then we're going to the Fire Dragon Bright, also from Citadel. This is for the lightest uh, rust that you're going to see on there. And I'm trying to trying to get the spots on the, on the, the shins that you will see because most of it will be covered up by armor plates later on. And then just add a little bit of water. And do a little bit of a rust, rust wash on the weapons. And if this pools and if it coffee stains, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Okay, moving on to Vallejo Silver so you can get down to the bare metal. And just using that sponge just like we used with the uh, the previous color and with the silver I'm just gonna hit the uh, the highest points pretty much everything that uh, everything that the fire dragon bright was hitting All right now going with the uh, the old-school null oil gloss I haven't gotten the new uh, the new version yet but I still have plenty of the old stuff I want to give it a the, the gloss coat just to uh, add to like the any kind of existing rubber hose like the pieces uh, the uh, the rubber boots that go over your hydraulics there some of the hydraulics themselves okay now mixing vermilion bronze flesh tone and hex lichen this is going to give me a very raw copper a very light raw copper which is going to be perfect for the uh the wash that's going to happen a little bit later uh it's was thinned down even though it looks pretty thick but uh yeah it does it did look a little thick there but everything works out in the end uh vallejo surface primer ghost gray this is going to work out great for the uh the flesh color that i'm going to put over the top of that and now that the copper is dried i'm going to hit some citadel shade Athonian camo shade it's one of my favorite shades that they have and then in some of these armor plates, some Death Guard green. And then eventually I'm going to hit it with some uh, Rack Earth Flesh too on certain areas that I want to uh, kind of do half and half. But all those are uh, primed with the, uh, 
the ghost gray there. There's the rack earth flush there. And there's our little half and half. Yeah, it looks a little pinkish, but once you start adding shades to it, it gives you a nice cream color. All right, then some dry brushing with some Citadel Screaming Bell. And that's going to pretty much conclude the, uh, the crotch bell there, apart from some uh, verdigris coming up here soon. Then just giving an, all these armor panels just a nice wash. It's between uh, Athonian Camo Shade and uh, Seraphim Sepia. A little Kislev Flesh on the uh, protruding parts that are breaking through the skin on the top shell there. And cleaning it up with my finger. And then once that's dry, just giving it a wash with some Citadel Kerberg Crimson Shade. And I'm hitting all the, uh, the little fleshy parts that have broken through the skin. And then eventually I'm just going to hit the, uh, the areas around it as well to give it like a bruising type, type look. Alright, this is uh, Plague Bear Flesh Contrast Paint. This is just the... Uh, the tabard that I just decided to uh, switch out and then painting the pustules you gonna know, start with some flash gets yellow and then uh, some fugan orange contrast paint after all that's dried up and a little bit of dry brushing on the uh, on the branches there that was just a uh, mix of uh, gray and brown. And I'm just adding some color to those pustules as I knock over the shoulder pauldron. And some more rust washing, this time on the, uh, the missile launcher. And this I just left very, very wet because I, I wanted to get like that, uh, that rust pooling effect going on there. And then using that same rust wash, going into the uh, the other the other shoulder pauldron once it gets in focus there, and just adding some rust washes, some stains. Go along the back there, going in between the uh, the panels. And then just hitting it with some, uh, just some stippling. All right, time for tentacles. And I believe this was a uh, mix of Bugman's Glow and Kislev Flesh. And eventually I, I glue that chain so it quits dang, it stops dangling around. Okay, dry brush of Kislev Flesh. You gotta have tentacles if you got Nurgle. Although those look like worms, but that's okay. Alright, going with some Dirty Down Verdigree. Added that to the uh, the crotch bell there. And then after, uh, after I put the actual paint on there, I went ahead with a hair dryer and the heat activated the uh, activated the paint in a way that it brings out like a very light kind of uh, patina there there you go add a little bit of water to your brush put that on there and then hit it with a hair dryer and it'll just turn that real real bright green for you nice okay then giving a glowing effect to the eyes starting off with Escorpina Green from uh, Vallejo and then of course it's my airbrushes in the way so you can't see anything that I'm doing and then hitting it with a uh, yellow green right after that and 
and I made sure to get a little bit on the tentacles too to give it that uh, a little bit of uh, OSL object source lighting there and then just a little bit of white just in the uh, the center of the eyes there it looks pretty good all right I printed off a ton of flat edge skulls about a year ago on my uh, Elegu Mars resin printer and decided I would add some to these uh, these knee pads here yeah it was either skulls or more spikes and I've got a lot of spikes on this guy already so I figured I'd just add a few more skulls here and there and the knee guards or knee pads whatever you want to call them the ones that I'm using here these actually came with the kit itself these weren't part of the uh, Etsy chaos conversion all right, Citadel Death Guard Green. I'm doing a uh, doing a wash on most of the uh, the armor panels on the weapons. This is I just wanted to do it, uh, a real thin wash, just to add a little bit of color because I didn't want to drown out all of the rust. I wanted to make it look like there was actually color on there originally, and over the years and battles, it just washed away, wiped away, scratched away, and uh, it actually came out at the like after everything dried out it was exactly what i was looking for I mean, not necessarily coffee staining but the way it dried with the uh, the amount of water that i put in there it i was really happy with it okay there's another skull this is actually off of the uh the great unclean one off the flail that he's got i just cut the uh a third of the back of it off off the head and stuck it onto that shield. Okay, adding a little bit more uh, color to the verdigris. I'm using Vallejo verdigris. I think this is from uh, Game Color because Vallejo has two different verdigris. One's model color and one's game color. And then just doing a real, real light wash. Just adding some more to it. And I had to be careful because the, uh, the dirty down uh, the dirty down rust will reactivate with water. It's semi-permanent until you until you put a uh, a varnish over it. All right, then just getting some more done on the uh, on the top piece here. Some bronze, some greens, some ivories. And then I go back and I add some verdigris to that as well. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah, I'm a sucker for the vertigray effect. Uh, any any kind of weathering and aging. I think you guys have heard me in the past saying that I just, I'm not a fan of the parade look. I think that's why I like Nurgle so much. Because it, it doesn't allow you to be sloppy, but it allows you to get away with things. But, yep, I'm loving this so far. Okay, then just uh, get some silver on those knee pads there. It's in focus. It's been painted and rusted up. And blood spatters. Using some Vallejo Hull Red. Because I wanted to make it look like it's been dried. I didn't want real bright red blood all over all over the the guards there and then stick them to the base i took some thin cork added it to the existing base and then started working my way up from there and then just marking out where the feet are going to go just so i don't put too much added real estate where the feet are supposed to stay, like stick on. And just adding a little bit more cork. Small cork chunks. And get that glued on with some super glue. And we got our Vallejo thick mud, which I'm gonna water down a little bit. And then make it so it doesn't look like cork. 
So as I'm doing this, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it if you did. Uh, I'm just having a great time with this channel and there's so much more to come. I've got, I was just going through the stash the other day. It was like so many different models I want to build, but this is like just trying to find the time to do it all. But currently we're, we're just shy of 500 subscribers and it would mean the world to me if I got to 500 before, before the summer. Okay, adding some more stuff to the, uh, the base there, some plaster chips. Uh, I've got some uh, 3D printed uh, cinder blocks, a few skulls here and there. And then I'm adding these little half pearls to this section here, which is gonna be like a toxic waste dump or whatever, toxic, toxic pool. And uh, craft paints I do use, but I use them for basing, uh, for uh, basing stuff in terrain. Uh, I know you can paint minis with them, but I I would rather not. Uh, that's just me, but I have no problem using craft paints on terrain. All right, the toxic pool is getting colorful there with some Vallejo light green and some shaky camera work there. And we're going to add some scale 75 toxic waste green and get that on the uh, some of the bubbles and then along the uh, the edges there and hitting the edge of the cork with some just to give it some a uh, little bit of a osl look to it that's coming out pretty good And then just on the top, some Vallejo yellow green. And we are almost done with this. Just gonna uh, do a little clear resin over the top of everything, then hit it with the UV light to make it nice and glossy, nice and sickly looking. Uh, got a couple of small details here and there, just some painting some of the rocks. But if you made it this far, Final reveal is on its way. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you liked it, like I asked before, please just give it a like. And if you're not subscribed, consider it. I mean, I'm not going to beg for subscribers, but it sure would be nice to get up to 500 before the summer. So with that being said, we're just getting some seraphim sepia on these rocks here. Just going to give it a little bit more real estate. Here's the, uh, the 3D clear resin and had a lot of fun with this one too even though um, my hands are kind of covering everything that i'm doing right now but i put the resin over the top of everything and then after that's done i go ahead and hit it with that uv light just cure it up really good makes it look nice and slimy and we're all set here for the final reveal so join me again for the next video thanks again for watching i really do appreciate it
Hey, if you liked the video, check out the playlist on the left-hand side. Thanks again for watching.